my fellow readers. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Swordtail or Katana Gatari. Um, volume one, only volume one. I don't have the others yet. <laughs> this is uh, another fantasy tale because that's what I have. And I'll just read the back quickly. This is from the pen of the author of the legendary Monogatari novels comes another unique offering available in English for the first time. <laughs> the basis of an animated series, Katana Gatari, brings to life a swordless swordsman and a self-described schemer who embark on a quest to obtain 12 peculiar masterpiece blades featuring a gatefold color insert, mm, beautiful interior art, and copious bilingual footnotes. This hardcover edition is the first of a quartet scheduled to collect the entire run. Brimming with action, romance, and unexpected wisdom, often as tongue-in-cheek as the Princess Bride, and shot through with ninjas, samurai, and secret movies, secret moves, sorry, Swordtail is Musashi for a new generation and a gift for any fan of adventure. So, yes, uh, this is Nisio Oisen, the palindromic name. Uh, this is the, this, this has a beautiful hardcover treatment. Like this is one of the, the ones that they will give special <laughs> treatment to. Um, I wanted to see if I could pull out the, yep, here it is, here it is. The artwork that they talked about. Image one, image two. Uh, and this, this really is gorgeously done. And the story itself is super fun. So in this first volume, we meet Shichika, who is this guy right there, the main character. And uh, our female lead, secondary main character, Togame the Schemer. Um, but when it opens, Shichika is living on this like remote island with his sister Nanami. His father had moved them there because he had developed this special skill it, it's all like a, a long story that involves swords so there was like the battle of creating the best blades and whoever had the best blade would obviously have the ability to conquer um, the country so it's all involving like the skills and the battling and also how easy it is for those with more power and wealth in order to get the better swords because they can obtain them. But Shichika's father develops the ability of swordless sword play. So he had the strength to defeat like any of the major swords without any sword. <laughs> there. He was so powerful in being able to do that that he knew that he himself would be perceived as a weapon and sought after. So he moved his family to the remote island so they wouldn't be able to be used and manipulated. And there he taught his son, Shichika, the swordless swordplay way. I don't remember if Nanami knows it as well or if she's just living there. I I don't know. I know she's a very like, strong character. We don't get to see too much of her, but she's very strong and Shichika is intimidated by her. That's all I can say. And then we meet Togame the schemer, uh, who is the white-haired uh, lady who comes to find him and wants his ability of swordless swordplay because she thinks his strength is the only thing strong enough to help her capture the 12 great swords um, that are scattered throughout the country. I think it's just the country. I don't think it's throughout the world. And so through a series of events, they end up partnering together and he leaves the island and they go on the quest to get the 12 swords. And that's essentially all it then boils down to is the episodic um, stories of uh, meeting with one of the sword holders and the battle for the sword. And then moving on to the next story. So that's it. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember. I think we got three in here. Do we get three or four in here? And since there's the 12, there's, there's three more books um, beyond this one. So I will be picking them up to see it. Um, the story itself is is very like humorous, like it's it's told with the, with the wit, which is why there's the um, reference to the Princess Bride, which is also has like that witty adventure tale. This is very much a similar way. Shichika is a little bit dense. I mean, he's been raised on an island alone. I mean, with his sister, but alone. So it makes sense that he's a little dense. He doesn't understand things about the world. 
He doesn't really know how to communicate with other people. So that does add like to the humorous elements. And there are also enough things to kind of make me want to continue to find out what happens. For example, what will happen once they get all the swords and what is Togame's uh, true purpose? Uh, will we ever see Nanami again? <laughs> and will Shichika return to the island or will Nanami get to leave the island? Because I'm pretty sure she's still alive. <laughs> there was like a battle before they left and I'm like, I didn't miss like Nanami dying, did I? I don't think so. It's so, like, I wonder like if those things will ever be resolved or just like <laughs> sit there in the background. Uh, will uh, Togame and Shichika fall for one another. Like, I think Shichika, no, I think Togame told Shichika that he could fall for her and that could be his, like, driving force or something or, or he was permitted to fall in love with her or something. So, like, will there be an actual, like, love story element? Um, they have, like, an interesting banter, so that would be interesting to see how it develops. How weird are these other sword wielders, wielders going to be? Because the first ones in this book are are particular. They are interesting characters. You know, so yeah, I mean, I'm invested enough to where I would want to see where this goes and where it ends. And like, when they do gather all the swords, because I think Togame was working for a higher organization. Will she give them the swords or keep them for herself? What's her, what is actually her motivation? and what will happen. Like, I want to know all of this stuff, and this is just volume one, so I don't know it. Um, but there's, like, little hints that make me think there's something else that's gonna, like, come up for the ending. Uh, and, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I would recommend this to people. Uh, one, if you, if you like the writer, you're probably gonna want to pick it up. But two, uh, if you like um, action, fantasy tales, with a lot of wit and humor, you're probably going to want to pick Katana Guitari up. Uh, it's good. Uh, you're not going to have bad time with this one. It's witty. It's fun. Very fast paced. Um, I liked that I could read like one of the stories a day and that's about it. I liked it and I would recommend it. That's it for this video. Until next time. Bye.